Good morning, Carrierville. I'm Wesley Bozeman, and you're watching Newsbeat 19. Today is Thursday, April 29th. As the school year is coming to an end, there are some interesting stuff happening in this school. The STEM program is a good way to increase your engineering mind by making soap out of fuel, making cars for the Pinewood Derby, how it can prepare you for your college. The STEM program at Carville is an advanced class in which students use tools and mental skills to brainstorm and solve modern issues. This class helps improve their math, critical thinking, and engineering skills. This being said, what exactly do they do in the STEM classes? Well, we have STEM 1, 2, 3, and 4, so the projects vary depending upon the uh, level of STEM. Uh, I'll just give you a couple of some of the, the top uh, projects in STEM 1. Uh, one of the things that we do is we learn to recharge a cell phone uh, with materials that you would just find lying around the house. You can't use uh, actual electricity like plugging it into the wall. So uh, kids have to do quite a bit of research for that. And it's, uh, it's fairly technical but it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. Uh, for STEM 2, uh, as you can see behind me here, uh, all of this soap, uh, this is one of the projects that they do is they learn how to make soap out of uh, biodiesel byproducts. Uh, STEM 3, one of the things that we're working on right now uh, is creating noise canceling headphones. And so the students in there right now are working on that. And then I think in STEM 4, uh, one of my favorite projects is uh, kids learning how to fly drones and uh, create 3D models. So those are just a, a few of the, the many projects that we do. But what do the students want to get out of the STEM class? Um, so in college I started taking mechanical engineering courses and we've had a lot of group projects and problem solving assignments that we've done. We did a lot of similar things in my STEM classes when I was in high school and so those projects that we did helped me to understand how to work with people in groups, how to generate ideas, to be able to solve some of these more complex problems in, in these STEM subjects. And so that translated to my college experience. The STEM program prepares students for the future in various different STEM fields, mainly attributed to engineering. Well, uh, these engineering jobs, one of the things that the, the companies are looking for are people who can think outside the box, uh, work collaboratively in groups, and communicate uh, the results that they uh, have created. Uh, they are also looking for students who have 3D uh, CADing software experience, so we try to introduce our kids to SketchUp and SolidWorks, and uh, as they progress through the program, they'll be using those uh, more and more frequently. One project that the STEM program did was the Pinewood Derby. But what is the Pinewood Derby? So Pinewood Derby is a very familiar project to a lot of our kids. Uh, it's, it's a project that the Cub Scouts uh, utilize. Uh, but as some of y'all know, it's a dad uh, project oftentimes. And so when we, we brought this on board this year, uh, some of my kids were like, hey, we did this when we were eight years old. And I was like, no, you didn't, your dad did. So uh, this was the opportunity for our students to get into the, the woodworking uh, shop and use some tools that they've never had the opportunity to use, like our band saws, table saws, sanders, and uh, drill presses. But what did the students do to make their cars faster? And so uh, there's a lot of science behind the Pinewood Derby uh, as far as what makes a car fast. And so the students have to do the research uh, on these tips and strategies and connect that to the science and uh, then they have to actually build the car and so uh, anytime you add an element of competition uh, to something that the kids can do they kind of really get excited about that and so uh, after the kids uh, created their cars uh, we ultimately had a race and uh, it was uh, it was a lot of fun uh, it really mimics the engineering design process where you do your research, you build your prototype, and then you test it, and then you go back and improve that uh, that prototype. So the kid here uh, testing uh, on a daily basis, and then making changes to their car. So it was it was a lot of fun. What do you think the students can learn from the Pinewood Derby? Well, I think uh, a couple of the things that the students mentioned to me that they learned was number one, they had to be self-sufficient because sometimes. When you're working in a group, uh, you can kind of 
almost fly under the radar a little bit and let other kids in the group kind of uh, lead the way. And this time it was all upon them. So they had to step up to the plate, uh, actually do the research and do the build. Uh, another thing that uh, was mentioned was the, uh, sometimes kids are afraid to begin a project because they're afraid of messing it up. And so they learned that uh, if you mess something up, you typically have the ability to fix it. And so a lot of them ran into trouble uh, initially, but they persevered and they fixed those mistakes and ended up producing a good product. So uh, I think that was, uh, those were just a couple of the lessons the kids learned. The STEM program offers students experiences to help prepare them for engineering in college. Even if the projects are as simple as a Pinewood Derby, they can be beneficial to a student. The nursing program has also been affected by COVID, but when COVID affected the school, more people joined the program without knowing what it holds. Nursing is important to me because I love helping people. And that's what I love to do. I love helping people of all different shapes, sizes, colors, and backgrounds. We use like patients and nurses and we switch out. We each work on each other during the class. And sometimes at clinicals we'll work together for a patient and stuff like that. Yeah, and everybody's also super encouraging, super uplifting to everybody else here. Um, Whenever we're in here, we'll always put our differences aside for the greater goal to be the best healthcare workers that we can be. We do a lot of skills, we do a lot of clinicals. Um, we have to have a certain amount of uh, long-term care hours and short-term care hours so that we can um, complete our certification. And as a result, we get a whole lot of hands-on training with both patients and in the lab. The pandemic has really helped us realize that this is life-saving work that we're doing and this is the foundation to um, any healthcare profession. Now that there's the pandemic, we also have more sick people, which need, we, need, we need more nurses and doctors. With this pandemic, it has definitely been different. I think that our hours have been cut short and things have been changed. We now go to clinicals about six hours every Sunday instead of just two hours every day. With the hybrid, our lab hours were cut short. We couldn't train as much in the lab and things like that. Nursing is very fun. Your first year will be lecture, but I can promise you that your instructors make it make it very, very fun. Nurse Jackson and Nurse Keisha both, um, they're very genuine and they really care about their students and they really try to make us engage in the learning so we can get these topics down. It's really hands-on. You get to see a lot, you get to do a lot, and you feel like you're actually in the profession, which is this, which is like very encouraging if you want to go into some sort of healthcare profession or healthcare administrative profession. Attendance is one of the most important parts that schools have to do, but even attendance has benefits. We talked to Mr. Maddie to see what those benefits are. With the recent testing weeks and this year's constant changes in scheduling, many students have been missing school or coming to school and felt like they could have just stayed home. In this news package, I interview Assistant Principal Mr. Maddie to figure out the importance of attendance and why it is so necessary to be in person if you are not a virtual student. What happened to the school if attendance is too low for too long? Margo, it affects our school funding. We receive less dollars from the state, and we also take a hit on our state report card. What is a state report card, you might have wondered. A state report card is a summary of how different schools perform. TennesseeEdu.gov explains, the report card includes a dashboard of key information about every school and district in the state. The report card also shows additional details about how all the students and specific student groups are performing. A state report card can impact which school a family decides to move close to or how much a school can get. Now, let's go back to that interview. What benefits does the school receive from high attendance? Uh, Margo, the school receives money from the state for high attendance. For example, the state looks at our 20-day report. It looks at our second period. We receive 12.5% funding from our second period attendance. Third period, the state looks at our third period attendance. Our funding is 17.5% from third period attendance. Then it also looks at our sixth and seventh period daily attendance. That's 35% of our funding for each one of those periods. Well, what is a 20 day report? It is simply a report of attendance numbers for students in 20 days. Now we cut to an insider phone call revealing how much money each student is worth to the school. Is per student. Okay. So that basically goes into general funds for to make sure that we have teachers that meet the 
number of students we have. Okay. And it's nine thousand dollars per student, correct? Approximately around there. Okay. Got it. Okay, thank you. Sure, no problem. Bye. All right, what situations can make it acceptable for students to miss school? So, Margo, I do have to file board policy, which is policy 6.20. There are six things where a student can miss school. For example, I'll just read this off to you. Um, a student is sick. A student has doctor's notes. There's a death in the family. Extreme weather conditions. Religious observation school endorsed activity, a subpoena to court, and then any circumstance, which is a judgment of the principal to create an emergency over which a student has no control. And once again, this is all board policy 6.20. I have to follow policy. I cannot break policy. So, only certain situations make non-attendance acceptable. Many students feel they still don't need to come to school on days where they will just be sitting there. So, what can happen if a student misses school outside of them? Let's find out. What consequences can students face if they don't show up to school? Well, Margo, once a student receives five minute excuse absence, I called the student and the parent in for a meeting. We set up a, a parent plan and they receive a notification of truancy. Once a student receives eight unexcused absence, I have to refer them to student services. Once a student hits 12 unexcused absence, which is tier three of truancy, I have to do a referral to juvenile court. The biggest outcomes from this interview are that attendance is not only tied to funding, but directly to teachers' paychecks. If you care about your teacher having a job, then you should strive for good attendance. Further, if you fail to go to school for more than three weeks, your parents could go to court and you could lose chances of graduation. An essential part of education is actually going to school and getting educated, so stay in school, Carrierville. For Newsbeat 19, I'm Margo Bridge. Student IDs is a big change for the high school. With the IDs, students will be able to scan at school events or at the lunch line. Students have to wear the IDs on their neck at all times, or can they put them in their backpack or pocket? So what's real important is that students wear the badges at all times, and it's important to do that for security purposes, just to make sure that we can identify each student. What are the colors on the ID for? Do they have any specific meanings? Yes, so each color represents a student's class level, and so those colors will remain with students for each grade um, as they go through. So you would have um, for you example flip your badge around let me see what you have so blue and so you are a 10th grader and so that blue and that's the class of 2023 and so that's the, that's your class and that will be your color until you graduate will the school have any plans to improve the school security with the IDs well, for one, um, it will be improved because we will be able to identify teachers because all teachers have to have a badge. And then if we have our workers in the building, they have a badge. And then with all students having a badge, it will be really easy to spot people that don't belong in the building. And so that should enhance security. We do ask that visitors in the building have um, a paste um, sticker on them. So I think this will definitely improve. So if you see someone in the building without identification, you'll know that they don't belong. Why is the school passing out the IDs now instead of the beginning of next year? That's a great question. Um, this was a really long journey. It took a while to purchase the items. They were purchased through a grant um, that I do supervise, and so we have to, we did a lot of research. We looked at some other districts that were using the badge system, and so it took a while just to get the design right and implement it, and we just wanted to make sure that we had it done correctly and so instead of you know you ask why not start next year we wanted to just try them out this year and we felt like that this would be a great time to go ahead and start that and we wanted to also give our seniors um, just a little token as well um, to take with them. For what reason are students not allowed to use different lanyards than the one provided by the school? 
that's another good question. Um, this particular lanyard was designed, um, if you notice, there is a breakaway clause in the back so that if it's accidentally hung in something that it will just pull off. It's also got a really good safety clasp at the bottom so that you shouldn't lose, it shouldn't come off. And it also identifies that, it, that you are a carnival student so that, you know, that's another piece of it that it's got the, the, the burgundy um, on that as well with carnival dragons on it. Does the school have any more future plans for the IDs? Yes, absolutely. So one of the things that we are looking at is, of course, events. When you go to an event, we're going to scan you in um, to that just, just so that you'll have to have your ID. It's almost like a college ID is what we're progressing towards. Um, getting a library book, so being able to scan in on that. And then maybe future things could also be um, by putting funds on it so that you could use that instead of having to carry cash in the cafeteria. So it could have some account money on that um, and then we're also looking at some reward systems for you know businesses and things like that to offer discounts for you in the community that's all we have for you from all of us at news by beat 19 have a good day